story from WDSU investigates regulating medical marijuana. We have exclusive details on which areas of the state are handing out the most physician recommendations. They aren't called prescriptions because federal law says you can't write prescriptions for medical marijuana. That's right, but the paperwork is handled like a prescription, but who's writing the recommendations and for what types of ailments? That's still shrouded in secrecy. Here's WDSU investigates Travers Mackle with the story. The architect of the state law is a state senator from the Lafayette area. He says this is not the intention of the law that he wants. And as it pertains to transparency, he says there is no reason to keep medical marijuana records hidden. On the North Shore, Chantel Carter Wilburn uses medical marijuana for her migraines. I say it helped me in a way where I can concentrate. I can actually get up out the bed and do things like I used to. It was recommended for her by Dr. Chad Domang. General anxiety, sleep disorders, uh, people with headaches. A physician on the forefront of medical marijuana in this state. He's been writing recommendations for over a year. It's unbelievable. I mean, I can line up hundreds. I've probably written a thousand at this point. But in August, just over three months ago, the legislature expanded the laws. In essence, allowing any doctor to write a medical marijuana recommendation to any person who is in pain. What they did in August is any doctor can recommend it for any disease process they feel is medically, medically indicated for. So that really opened it up. And records from the Louisiana Board of Pharmacy show that when the law opened up, the numbers went up. In August of 2019, 51 doctors were writing recommendations. Last month, that number was more than 120. And as for what areas of the state are seeing the most activity, here's a map provided by the Board of Pharmacy. The areas in red are where the most recommendations are written. They break it down by zip code. Lake Charles is seeing the most recommendations written and filled, followed by Covington and then Denham Springs. It was the concern of the trend nationwide to move toward recreational marijuana. The Louisiana Family Forum, arguably the most conservative lobbying group in the state, supported making medical marijuana legal as long as recreational use was not allowed. Transparency in anything is light, and light is truth, and that's always good. But not everything is transparent when it comes to medical marijuana. WDSU Investigates wanted to let you, our viewers, know what doctors are writing the most recommendations and for what ailments and pain. Are people getting it for migraines, glaucoma, insomnia, Crohn's disease, and who's issuing the most recommendations? Our repeated requests to the Board of Pharmacy were continually denied by the board attorney, Carlos Finale. You've, you've prompted a curiosity on my part as well. I, I don't believe anonymity is the spirit of the law. And I think if you were to talk to the, one of the founding driving forces behind medicinal marijuana, it's a pharmacist out of Brobridge, Senator Fred Mills. I don't think he would tell you that was his intent. So that's what we did. We caught up with Senator Mills at his office via Zoom. Because it is a, a, a scheduled drug I think they're saying that certain geographic proprietary information can't be shared. We also asked the Republican about the Board of Pharmacy's refusal to list doctors writing recommendations and for what ailments. I have to be candid with you. I'm just not sure from a legal standpoint if that argument is totally correct. He's reached out to the Board of Pharmacy and says lawmakers may look at filing amendments to make the medical marijuana data more transparent. I think we need to know where people are getting it, what is the disease state, and I think we, we need to take that information and not only make it public, but we need to study it. And we should point out, while the Board of Pharmacy denied our request for ailments, distributors, and physicians, it did give Senator Mills info. As long as it's not personal medical information, there should be no difference in what he received and what you, the public, are entitled to see. The Board of Pharmacy is a government entity. In other states like Colorado, prescription information is on a public website listed by where people live, age of those getting the medical marijuana, and what the frequent conditions are. Knowing what the medicinal practice is successful at, where it's potentially 
uh, brings cautions, precautions, or negative impacts, or where there may be an emerging pill mill that's simply dispensing this for recreational purposes. I think there's valid public concerns that we need to know if and when that is occurring and how we might abridge it. Even doctors are for more transparency. So my struggle with the regulation and political end of this is it doesn't match up with the medical. And while this fight over transparency plays out in the state capitol, patients say the practice of prescribing has changed their lives. It's a big plus. Now, we should point out medical marijuana is not free and can be quite expensive. It's also usually not covered by most people's insurance policies. A small bottle can run as much as $200. I'm Travers Mackle for WDSU News. Now back to you. We're also adding something new is called WDSU investigates behind the scenes. Travers and others on the investigative team discuss how they found the stories and reported on them. You can find this on WDSU's Facebook page. Kind of